Hi Joan, I'm very happy uh, that I'm able to talk to you today. You are a real pioneer of computer art and I'm so proud that you will join us uh, in the Generative Art Summit in the Ac Academy in Berlin in July. And uh, before this is happening, I do an interview with you and want to hear a bit more about your own history. So we will begin uh, at the very beginning. And uh, the first question, of course, is how did you get into computer art, which was really something very special in the 1960s, 70s, when you began to work with that medium? Yes, thank you so much. And thank you for the invitation to participate in the conference. I'm very excited to be uh, in Berlin and look forward to seeing everyone. And thank you. I began in early 1970s. I was teaching at a university a design class, and we were studying various types of visual dynamics, including symmetry operations. And I had a graduate student who was doing already computer programming on the large mainframe computer for architectural design, and he was creating architectural drawings. And he was able to create a program for students to use in which they created one uh, design module, very small, uh, and then identified the XYZ coordinates, typed those onto computer cards uh, with a key punch, and then uh, this, this young man, the graduate assistant, wrote a program that would generate 20 different symmetry operation designs with each module. So each student punched their cards and then we ran them all through the card reader at the computer center for the mainframe and each student got a roll of drawings uh, with 20 different symmetry operations. And we, that allowed discussions of the various types of visual dynamics um, in particular compositions. So after I discovered that we could do that, I then became very interested in doing my own drawings and took two semesters of Fortran programming and learned about the, um, the algorithms required to control the pen plotter. And so I began writing programs that would create a variety of drawings. And the interesting thing to me at that point also was the idea that embedded in these programs were algebraic formulas. And of course, they're dependent on or they use variables. And that's the idea of variables, which are variable values within a drawing program, allowed me to create an incredibly wide variety um, of experimental drawings at that point because variables and the way you insert values and control their evolution, so to speak, um, allows you this incredible diversity of ideas that then come through the drawings. So uh, that's, and then I, I proceeded to make many, many uh, drawings. Thank goodness the university had a mainframe computer and the geography department had a pen plotter and I was in the art department and they supported all of that work. So that's how I uh, begun using computers. Mm -hmm. What was the most uh, difficult thing for you um, using the computer as an art tool? Um, where were the challenges for you? I think the challenges were that you didn't see the drawing ahead of time. You were making discriminations and, and decisions in a sense in an ephemeral space, virtually uh, in your head in, a minute, in a, an imaginary space. And so as I begun, I usually would do a whole series of drawings and I do still have many of the roles of drawings which are most interesting to me because you could see the evolution of an idea and the flow of an idea and the flow of um, experimental work through the different uh, drawings. But it was the time lag between when you started to create the drawing and of course you had to specify the initial ideas in XYZ coordinates and you were working in XYZ space and then punching the cards on a key punch and being very careful, 
to keep them in order, and then going across campus to the mainframe computer and putting them in the card reader and then waiting oh, between two hours and 24 hours um, to look at the printout. And the printout was literally the program that you had written. So you could check to make sure that you typed in the program properly. It wasn't the drawings. It was the set of instructions that you had created. And then if that was correct, I asked the computer center to put the data that I had generated onto, they put it onto a 16 BPI tape, which was a large tape, and I would take the tape over to the geography department um, where they used the plotter to draw maps, and in their downtime, they would mount my tape and do uh, the drawing. So it was, it was a combination of being impatient and wanting, you know, develop and create more drawings, but having to wait for the time, I think. The, the work itself is much more analytical, probably less intuitive, because you have to think about it. it's conce more conceptual. How would you try to describe this difference between working before using a computer and then using a computer? Yeah, I generally work in a very intuitive way. So, um, so this was a shift. And just before I started doing these uh, computer drawings, I had been doing a series of drawings by hand, which also had sets of parameters. I used... Uh, sets of curvilinear lines and curvilinear forms that I would draw either with pencil and tracing paper, and I have all these, I, or I have many of them, and then I would do a series of actual drawings with the rapidograph with an ink drawing um, pen. So even though I worked, I would place these elements intuitively, that was also an analytical process. Um, because I had defined a set of visual elements that I was, um, I was using. So when I got to the computer, algebra, algebra it was a flowing language for me. It wasn't um, a hindrance at all. I didn't, it didn't frighten me at all. So to work uh, analytically where things were um, specified in a, in a very specific way was really not, not difficult for me. But translating my intuitive ideas into that um, more analytical space, uh, I think, was a bit, of, a bit of a challenge for me. Well, there's a, a, a big discussion still going on, and it began with computer, anime, uh, computer graphics um, and computer art. What is the role of the code and what is the role of the image? Oh, of? I think that's an incredibly important question. Um, for me, of course, the image and the artwork is uh, the most invigorating and inspiring. Um, however, I think of code um, as digital raw material. It's the raw material we're working with, and it creates one or more in my case, many data sets. And the data sets, what's so curious and intriguing about a digital data set is it's malleable. It doesn't have a form. It's not prescribed. It doesn't become a painting or a pot or a musical composition or an animation. Um, but it can become those. And that's where the artist takes a hold of that, uh, by, through the code, takes a hold of that data set and makes, gives it a physical dimension um, and brings it, gives it a presence and brings it to the forefront as an artwork. It's a complicated process, but yes. <laughs> sure. Um, you, uh, I would like to get some information how it was when you, began to learn programming. I, I guess there were not so many women around. Uh, you were living in a man's world 
and uh, how did they reflect what you are doing and that there's a young uh, lady in the course and wants to learn programming how were your experiences with the other side of the human beings I think they pretty much ignored me because they didn't understand its, its importance or its significance. I was in the art department as a faculty member, but in my area, the design art area, they were all men faculty. So working with computers did not threaten them. Um, and then in the classes, I had a very gentleman uh, instructor, and he liked you know, everybody has their own style when you begin to program. Um, there's a personal dimension to the way you articulate what it is you want to do through the set of instructions in the programming. And for some reason, he was drawn to, maybe because, um, you know, my, my approach was a little different than the young men in the class. He was drawn to the way I was articulating uh, instructions. So I, you know, and then I think it was the issue that they weren't, of course, taking me seriously. <laughs> and so when it came to ex exhibitions, I, I don't think the work was taken seriously, so that was um, a bit frustrating. There is an interesting uh, difference between the way men and women use computers. Sherry Turkle at MIT wrote a book a, a while ago about how men, of course, use computers in a very linear, hierarchical way, but women um, use them more in a fluid way where there is a set of parts or pieces and like puzzles, they move them around um, in a fluid way, in an intuitive way and then put them together. So um, I, I wasn't aware of that until I started reading her, um, her book. And then I, I'm like, yes, that's totally true. But So I didn't get any pushback at that time other than the frustration of um, not the artwork not being taken seriously. And of course, then it was like, I wasn't taken seriously. And whether it was because I was a woman or whether I was working with technology, um, I'm not really sure. You had two problems. You were a woman and I think you have learned or you learned uh, programming not in the art department. You learned it uh, where the technicians were or the mathematicians and, and these guys. You were a, a woman and an artist. That was double complicated, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. The, the, the Fortran courses were in the math department. Um, but I just decided I don't know that I decided, but I, I just went ahead and decided I would try this and uh, to not be um, discouraged by um, the fact that I didn't fit in. <laughs> Were there at least uh, maybe one or two uh, guys uh, that appreciated what you did or could understand or follow what you were doing? Or were you totally alone, lost in the man's world? Well, I think initially I was out there on an island, uh, although nobody was stopping me. And the art department was, the chairman of the art department got me a key punch machine, got me cards, was paying for my computer time. I never, I never understood that they had to pay for my computer time. He was paying for my computer time. He was paying for all the plotter drawings um, and the supplies, so uh, that was very positive. On the other hand, in the in the geography department, I, they would never change the size of the pen point. So <laughs> it was always the same. It was black ink. They would never incorporate or up. They would never use color, and I tried to convince them like you can, you know, articulate and specify different ideas within a map by using color. You know, all we have to do is change the pen for crying out loud. I, I could never convince them, so I was never able to make color drawings, except that I used um, layered color xerography to take 
a series of drawings and then uh, make them into color and superimpose them. So, um, yeah. And and as I went on, and I, I then was part of the computing community at the university, and so I got put on committees regarding the use of computers. And so I did meet um, a scientist who was very interested in what I was doing and seemed to understand the potential, and we began a discussion about simulation and visualization um, using computers. But there were other scientists who um, just, because I didn't have their same background, um, but I did understand science and scientific processes. So I, I could uh, participate, I had the vocabulary, I could participate in discussions because I was very interested in technology and was reading um, about that. And, you know, my interest was con connecting technology with the natural world which, and the environment, which I did uh, through formulas that describe natural phenomena, like wind currents and light waves. So um, once I became part of that community, then there was a bit more dissension because there was a few people that were interested and knew that I had the insights to help them uh, begin to uh, visualize scientific phenomena, um, but there were, of course, others. <laughs> okay, so let's come a bit uh, to your own work and, and the development of your own work. You started, as you mentioned before, with because there was no other choice uh, with plotter graphics, um, but uh, how did it evolve? Um, how did your work evolve? And maybe you can give some, some examples of, of uh, important steps in this development. Um, personal computers, the first Apple computer, I, I embraced because of its accessibility compared to um, working with a mainframe computer. Other men, and particularly scientists that I was working around, thought it was really that the personal computer was a folly. They didn't take it seriously at, at all. So, I, you know, again, it's just, you just keep plowing ahead because you know you're doing something that you need to do and is important to you, but because I've always seen the potential and I continue to see the potential of computers as incredible for artists. So I just kept working um, in that regard. When I got to the Art Institute, it was a bit more frustrating. Um, again, the faculty was um, primarily all men. <laughs> Um, and I did chair the department for a number of years and was able to build curriculum. But as time went on, um, I would create courses that uh, were focused on content, uh, specific kinds of artwork. And I can talk about that. And I always felt that I needed to teach computer programming and computer technology and software embedded in the creative process, in the art making process. Mm -hmm. And that you have the idea initially first, which is how I work, and then you find a way to make that come about. Whereas their perspective was you teach the technology first, and then you make artwork. But the difficulty with that is then the technology tends to inform the artwork, rather than the creative inspiration informing the artwork. Mm -hmm we function in a physical world. So this push towards virtuality um, was difficult for me. And I always felt that the, the screen was a portal to something else. It was a portal to another realm. I mean, indigenous cultures live in multiple realms simultaneous, simultaneously. And so, we do too. We, we just maybe aren't as uh, visible about it. So I wanted to also create something with the computer that was outside and had a materiality. I had been introduced to the hand digital jacquard loom at my school and in my department I always put it on the budget list and the men would never agree to incorporate that into the department. And it was important because the department of art and technology 
really led the way in terms of future thinking of how we might use computers in the art making process. So eventually I was able, I have one in my studio here. Um, I am not a weaver, so I am learning, but I have done some very interesting um, hand uh, digital jacquard. I weave with silk and silk and stainless steel um, and also hand woven silk. I've also incorporated fiber optics. I've woven with muscle wire because I'm interested in three-dimensional sculptural fiber forms that can come off the loom. So I am at the beginning of this, but it, for me it's very invigorating and very exciting. So thanks a lot, um, Joan. This was really fantastic to talk to you. And uh, I'm really looking forward to meet you in Berlin personally. And um, you will be at, at one of our talks as well. And um, I'm really grateful that you will come um, and join us in Berlin. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be included. Thank you.